All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I'm very excited to talk about this because TrueNAS 13 is finally out. It's been out for a little while now and enough time that I'm safely able to say there's no glaring issues in it. It's not perfect, but it is a huge performance step up for a lot of cases, and so it's a great upgrade. And so I wanna talk about the changelog a little bit, what came out, my experiences with it, and the fate of TrueNAS in general. All right, so let's just start about talking about TrueNAS core versus TrueNAS scale. So about in the beginning of this year, in February, TrueNAS scale came out. TrueNAS scale is a Linux version of TrueNAS core. TrueNAS core is based on FreeBSD. So they're both Unix children, but FreeBSD and Linux are two very different operating systems. And so there's not a ton of compatibility in between them. And so because of that, things like Docker just do not work in FreeBSD without first making a Linux virtual machine. It has jails, but not Docker containers. And so there's a lot of issues like that. And so that's why they've started this initiative to start moving on to TrueNAS scale. Moving on is not a good term there, but developing TrueNAS scale, which is a Linux version. It's gonna add a lot of features. And I think TrueNAS scale, the goal for it, is to be kind of a Synology competitor. Kind of a small business, home user competitor that's designed to be very friendly with all these different Docker containers and things like that, while also having a Gluster FS backend, which allows you to have multiple different TrueNAS scale boxes all combine their storage into one big thing. But then there's also TrueNAS Core. TrueNAS Core is currently, and will be, I think for at least the next few years, will be the fast and stable version of TrueNAS. So I am continuing to run TrueNAS Core because I know it's going to be the fastest one that is going to be the most stable and I don't need the highly virtualized stuff that comes with TrueNAS scale. So TrueNAS Core is for me and TrueNAS Core 13 is a huge upgrade for a ton of people, partially because of FreeBSD 13 that just came out and is the core operating system of TrueNAS Core 13 having massive performance gains, especially for multi-CPU architectures. They solved some NUMA bug. I tried reading up on it, could not quite understand it, could not find enough documentation on it, but they were able to get insane performance in multi-CPU enclosures because of a update to the scheduler, as well as how memory is handled. And so because of that, there is significant performance increases, especially for multi-CPU instances, like I've got in TrueNAS Core 13. Overall, I do think that right now, TrueNAS Core 13 got less love and less development time than TrueNAS Core 12 did or any of the other major TrueNAS Core releases before this because TrueNAS is an open sourced application. And part of that is you've gotta be the new and the shiny thing to get attention. So right now with scale coming out, a lot of the open source developers and the home lab guys who are always trying the newest, latest, and greatest thing are gonna be running TrueNAS Scale and not TrueNAS Core. And so because of that, I do think that the TrueNAS Core 13 release got less debugging and less people checking out and less people trying it because there is this TrueNAS Scale that a lot of people in the home lab are trying instead. So that is one unfortunate thing. And if you read the release notes, they kinda of went back and forth on like, hey, should you upgrade or not? For example, when I upgraded about a week ago, it said, hey, this is only for labs. Don't upgrade this to a production machine. Even though, according to this release schedule, release should be considered general use and home user should be the release candidate. So I don't know if that's a messaging problem or if there's kind of a bug in there. If so, I've not seen anything about it and I've not seen anybody have an issue with it. But that, that is one thing I do think TrueNAS scale coming out has made less people working on and testing TrueNAS core. But for the time being, it's still lightning fast. And because of the update to both OpenZFS as well as FreeBSD under the hood, there was a significant performance increase. I mean, this is my post right here. So this is my speed test before the update, about 708 and 775. And then after the update, I got significant write speed increases and read speed increases. I mean, it is a very significant one. That is a recreated test. I rebooted the machine between them 
everything was kept pretty static. And yeah, it, it was a significant increase. I would not call this a scientific test, but it did very, very, very well. And I'm very happy with that. Okay, so now the performance increase is there. Mac OS has always had trouble maxing out a SMB connection, but if I do a quick speed test on this, I did that test I just showed you on my Mac Pro, that's my desktop in there, but this is running Apple Silicon. And if we do a quick test on this, you're going to see how much faster it is than usual. All right, well, for some reason, my write speeds are a little bit slower. Literally, just before this video, I started even filming this video. I tested this and read and write were both well over 900. Don't know what it is now, but as you can see, the M1 Max seem to have quite a bit more speed underneath the hood, or they've just done a much better job of optimizing Apple Silicon's version of the Samba configuration. So overall, it's a huge speed update. And I've been testing this for a while now, and I've not had any bugs in my normal workflow. So true NAS Core 13, drop-in replacement, everything upgraded perfectly fine, did not have any issues. I even had some virtual machines running that continued to work just fine after upgrading. Everything that happened was I just got more performance, which is exactly what you like to see. Overall, my Final Cut Pro workflow worked, and that's the hard thing. That tends to be a quite complex thing. I don't know why, but it's stressed out NASs in the past but this had no issues whatsoever. All right, and so now, let's go ahead and just end this on the release note. And honestly, there are not a ton. And so on this, there were not that many updates. The biggest one was gonna be by far upgrade to the ZFS version, as well as the free BSD version underneath the hood. Now, I will say before you run this, note there are a lot more issues than there were in previous builds especially compared to other things, which is what I was talking about earlier with the whole scale thing taking a lot of the developers out. There were a lot more issues than would normally come out in a TrueNAS core release. So right here, first off is disk replacement fails. And so I've seen this, I saw it on Reddit. It's not terrible. The command line does work still, so it's just broken the GUI, but that's never a good thing when such a core feature like that break somehow and nobody was testing it. NFS, NConnect, which is basically where you have multiple connections, multiple streams for NFS is broken on it as well. And it's just unknown when it's ever gonna be even able to be fixed for TrueNAS Core. NetTalk, okay. This is just part of the thing where AFP is going away. Scale has completely gone away with AFP entirely. And Core, I don't even know if they're gonna fix it, honestly. There's just an issue with AFP. macOS users should really try to get to SMB sooner rather than later. It is going to be a lot more stable and a lot less bugs going on. The mini threes somehow do not have the proper enclosure working. It, has a weird glitch in there. It, it's a lot of things here that just did not seem super tested. Ah, and here was my issue. Right here, you can even see that the train shows that it's the community release only, not enterprise supported. Now it does say that this is for small businesses, but clearly not enterprises, but that's an error that was never in the other ones that's kind of aggressive. And I think it's partially because of these bugs. There's an issue with plugins. You really need to look through these. I've heard of this having a lot of people's issues where you can't use VNC in some situations to talk to VMs. And yeah, there's a lot of issues here that you need to be aware from. Another one that's pretty important is let's go ahead and just log into my TrueNAS build. And we're going to see an error here. Right here, there is a new ZFS version for feature flags. It's got this error here, but if you read in the forums, you do not actually want to upgrade your pool because there's no reason to right now. And by upgrading your pool, you're not gonna be able to roll back. So right now, do not upgrade your pool. I think the plan is to have a upgrade in the GUI option in U3, that's what I read. So I would not recommend upgrading your pool because there's no benefit to it right now unless you're using a very much an edge case but other than that, I would not recommend upgrading your pool. One other thing I have noticed 
is for some reason services a couple of times has jumped to a significant amount of RAM utilization. I am not sure if that's real or not, but I definitely have seen that. But other than that, even with all those issues, for me, TrueNAS Core 13 was a huge upgrade. I do think it is going to be the kind of beginning of the end for TrueNAS Core though. I think in the next few years, scale is going to get more stable. And I think long-term, because of easier use of getting more drivers, being on Linux is going to be very valuable because it's so much easier to merge in other open source projects. Because quite frankly, most open source projects generally work best in Linux. And you also get so many more driver support, so much more just general hardware support when you work with Linux than FreeBSD. FreeBSD is a great operating system that's ultra stable and very fast, but I do think that we're gonna be migrating away from it, especially given the fact that this whole environment is turning into your NAS is not just a file server, but it's this entire cloud that allows you to do all these different things on there. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. Go and leave any other true NAS tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.